Selena Eden, Chapter 3 The Queen of Salah Priscilla and Noel followed behind Jessica, both their mouths open in awe at the spectacle of the castle's interior. The golden floors were clean enough to show their reflections. The main hallways lined with matching golden columns that stretched the ceiling. The castle stretched seemingly endless from the entrance on. The queen's chambers isn't that far, Jessica droned. She ran a hand through her long stringy blonde hair, and was fleet feet click-clacked against the hard floors. The queen's chambers? I thought you were the queen. I never want to be the queen. That would be my mother. Her chambers just down the corridor. Jessica's voice echoed off the interior castle walls. They walked a bit further in silence till Jessica spoke up once again. I see Malin made it to you without fail. Jessica sailed, her voice bouncing off the walls. Malin? No axe. My magical carrier pigeon? I speak to her and she understands. You're a mage? I haven't seen one of those in a while, Priscilla replied. Don't get your hopes up, I'm still in training. The robust castle seemed to stretch on for a while. For every picture that hung on the walls, there were candles lit along the way, illuminating the main hallways. Did you really have to bring the sword, really, Pris? You don't mind me calling you Pris, do you? It's fine, you can call me Pris Noel. My sword, Glam, it kind of stays with me, and so do the daggers on my waist. No matter what, they're a part of me, you know? A sword and daggers of sentimental value? Noel looked at her for confirmation. Yeah, you can say that. Would you care to explain it? It's a long story. Priscilla stared, tra stared traveled to the ground. I'd rather not talk about it. I'd rather not remember it, Priscilla thought to herself. Noel looked over at her and saw the sadness in her eyes. That gave him indication not to pursue any pursue the topic any longer. They continued into a narrow hallway much smaller than the last. The three stopped in front of a door. So, if I need to go to the bathroom, don't tell me you'll make me walk all the way back, Noel joked. Jessica ignored him, reaching underneath one of the two lanterns, lighting the door before them. She reached inside a small compartment and pulled out a small key. Priscilla whispered into Noel's ear, She's pretty damn rude to be a princess. I know. What guy want to be her prince? Noel whispered back. I heard that. Your whispering isn't very subtle. Priscilla perked up quickly. We didn't say anything about you. Not at all, right, Noel? Uh, yeah, what she said. Anyway, this way. The faster you perform your remedies, the faster you can leave. Jessica held the door open for them. Priscilla walked by, sticking her tongue out at Jessica. She ignored Priscilla. Noel followed behind his companion. Jessica walked in last, closing the door behind them. They stepped into the room filled with decorations. Two oil lamps set at the end of the bed, illuminating the entire room. A gaunt woman rested sickly underneath a blanket. She was lying in a canopy bed, a very large royal-sized bed covered in silk velvet. So wait, the queen summoned me, us, to heal her, Noel started. And this is the queen who is sick. My mother, my mother's not feeling well. Jessica's voice reduced to a hushed tone. Jessica caressed her mother's silken blonde hair. Priscilla's eyes narrowed at Jessica before moving back to her mother. Noel moved to the other end of the room, removing his pack from his side. You thinking about helping her? What's all this you're doing? Well, you got to relax and be patient first. I just need to get the proper ingredients, enchantments, magic materials, herbs, and etc. Try to be patient. Priscilla rippled what Noel said. Noel knows what he's doing. Right, and try to tell my mother to be patient. I mean, it's not like she's very ill. Jessica, please, honey, let them work. Queen Salah croaked. A few harsh coughs escaped her throat. Just like her daughter, Queen Salah had long, stringy blonde hair and cat-like green eyes. Though her face was gaunt, she was an attractive older woman. I trust in the monastery of faith. Your father, Lenin, sent you, is that correct? Noel turned from his bag to kneel to the queen lying in her bed. Y yes, ma'am, that's very true. I am his son, Noel. A weak smile covered her mouth. I remember you, Noel, son of Lenin. 
Your father brought you out here on an adventure before. You were so little back then. <laughs> it's been so many years you've grown, and you look very handsome now. Noel's face blushed red, his eyes slightly open, looking over at Priscilla. He quickly pushed on her shoulders. Hey, what are you doing, Noel? You might want to show some respect. She's the queen. I noticed you didn't kneel once since you stepped foot in this room. Noel, get off me. Jessica cleared her throat, folded her arms, and tapped her foot. Look, I don't mean to sound agitated, but please hurry this up. Noel quickly stood up from the decorated rug, brushing off his knees. He moved back to his bed of medicinal herbs and incantations for the sickness. He crushed the herbs using a motor and pestle. The herbs were luscious and wet and would eventually become a green juice. He prayed over the motor and pestle, placing both his hands underneath the bowl. Closing his eyes, he began to mouth a few words. It was a language that none of them understood, and they stared at Noel, completely lost in his chanting. His eyes opened slowly with one hand. A small spark sizzled in his palm. Still using his alternate hand to hold the motor, Priscilla gasped as his eyes went completely blue. He spoke in a foreign tongue, waving his hand imbued with magic over the crushed herbs. Priscilla felt a strange tingling sensation in her gut. It was like falling from the sky. Her stomach filled with butterflies, her knees buckled and were touching each other as she put her hands over her mouth. Jessica didn't budge. What was happening, Priscilla thought. In rapid repetition, Noel continued chanting. Soon it was... It wasn't much longer before he opened his eyes. Slowly, his eyes returned to their normal hazel color. He used one hand to remove his hood, exposing the short black hair. Priscilla stared at him in amazement. He must be using magic, Priscilla thought to herself. Priscilla knew something about magic, all right. She could never seem to use it for some reason or just could never figure it out. So she just stopped trying altogether. And for, no for Noel to be so inexperienced, he seemed to be a natural. He hovered over the queen in her sick bed. Priscilla's tail seemed to wag in anticipation, so she tucked it around her waist. Noel used one hand to hold the bowl of contents. With the other, he helped the queen lift her head up. What's all ailing you, dear queen of Salah, he asked. My entire body feels as if it's cooking in a cast oven. My head carries the weight of a boulder. My throat burns like a forest fire in my eyes. My eyes strain as if I hadn't slept in days. Noelle placed the bowl and its contents of crushed, juice, magical herb to her lips. Take drink, my queen. She did drink. Her thin lips pursed on the edge of the bowl, taking in the herbal green liquid in sips. She stopped after a moment to let the juice digest in her system. A harsh cough escaped her throat. After another drink, she finished what remained. Noelle cupped the empty bowl in both hands. What's this? Why is the queen so sick? Noel put a palm to her forehead, only it felt like pressing his hand against a pot in a kiln. He could feel the wet beads of sweat on her forehead. I'm not sure, Pris. It's an ailment I've never encountered before. A strong magic is surrounding it. Noel replied, an ailment never contracted before? A, a strong magic? She contracted a rare disease. Jessica started. They call it the, the Itala flu. Priscilla and Noel turned their attentions to Jessica. Itla flu what? Priscilla said in disbelief. I never heard of such a sickness, Noel said. Well, aren't you both educated? Jessica said softly at first, and then sharply, more like ignorant. Jessica paced around the room, her arms folded, but anyone should know about the disease. The first inhabitants of this land were the most disgusting bunch. They brought diseases, filth. They were no more than near, mere Neanderthals, the filthy beast. Idol is unclear whether it was the lar was the is unclear whether it was the language they spoke or the name of their tribe. This was before the city of Salah's inception. Priscilla then cl clenched her fist. Filthy beast. She doesn't know. She hasn't been there. She eyed Jessica, taking her offensive comment. A wave of anger washed over. Well, you knew all this, huh? Noah asked. The princess of Salah should be educated. It's a requirement, but. This disease is strange in this case. Jessica put a hand to her chin. A 
apparently not educated enough, Priscilla said sharply. She's wrong. That can't be right. Well, it is, as I said before, the disease is quite rare, and yet somehow both my mother and father contracted it. The queen interrupted with harsh coughs. No one, Priscilla moved to her sick bed. Jessica didn't budge. Queen Salar, are you okay? Noel asked. Mother, we're here. You're going to be okay, Jessica replied. It'll be fine, Jessica. Promise me you'll stay strong for me, Queen Salar replied wiggly. Don't talk like that. Please, Mother, don't talk like that. Hey, didn't you say this remedy of yours would work? You did the superpower glowy thing with your eyes, Priscilla replied. It should, well, help at least. I, I know it's a remedy for curing ailments. What? You sound as if you knew what you were doing. Don't tell me you came here to take a chance. Why would your father just come out here? Would have made far more sense, don't you think? The last thing I need is some gamble on my mother's life. Look, the remedy needs time to settle. Once it's done, she should be back. Jessica rubbed her forehead in frustration. What if that's not good enough? Hey, he's trying the best he can here. It's not like Noel's giving up. Priscilla jumped in front of Noel, and to his defense, she faced Jessica. And you, stay out of this. Do I recall you doing anything here aside from running your mouth? Well, now, aren't we rude? I want to see your mother back to health just as much as you do. At least you have a mother and a place to call home. I have neither. Noel looked back at Priscilla, wondering why he didn't notice before, but... His gaze fixed on Priscilla's tail coming from her backside. He wanted to ask her about it, but he just kept his mouth shut. Jessica met with Priscilla's narrowed eyes. They were silent for a moment. Well, it looks like you'll both be here until my mother's 100%, Jessica replied. Huh, well, I'll scratch his head. I really got to get back home. There's no way I can stay here. Jessica pointed a finger at Noel. Weren't you sent here to nurse my mother back to health? Well, yeah. Both Jessica and Priscilla got behind Noel, pushing him over the table with all his potions, herbs, and spell books in his sack. You have a responsibility, Jessica said. Oh, no, you don't. I just got done defending you a minute ago, Priscilla chimed in. But ladies, it may take some time. Put together as many potions as you can, Jessica replied. Her response, not confident, but what were her other options? Priscilla felt her stomach. She never thought I could talk so much. Um, Jess? Jessica turned to face Priscilla. All right, I got to deal with you also. What is it? Priscilla folded her arms and tapped her foot. Well, I almost feel like I'm walking into a death trap asking you for a favor. You're lucky I left my dignity at the door for the sake of your mother. I'm getting pretty famished. It was the first Jessica laughed since they'd been in the castle. I was wondering if you had any food, Priscilla asked. What would you like me to do about that? You acted like I expected you to say yes, Priscilla growled. That left dignity as apparent now. Jessica's lips curled into a twisted smile. Priscilla got in, Prisci in Jessica's face. I'll show you a parent. Girls, please, a weak salah croak. No fighting. Jessica, please accommodate our guests. They're travelers who are trying to get me back to health. Really? <sighs> Mother, do I really have to? Noel came back to the queen's bedside with a second helping. Yes, Jess, accommodate our guests, please. The queen pleaded in a weakly tone before her dry coughing started again. I'll speak with the cooks and maidens and to prepare the table, Jessica grumbled. She left the room folding her arms. Moving past Priscilla, Jessica said to her quietly, You're lucky I don't care to do this for you. Priscilla stuck her tongue out, Jessica, as she walked by, keeping an eye on her. Once Jessica left the room in utter disgust, Priscilla moved to the queen's bedside. Thanks, your majesty. No, thank you both. She looked for Priscilla and Noel, but I have a question, children. Noel's eyes widened. He stopped in the middle of giving the queen a second helping. What is it, my queen? It's for your friend, Priscilla. Priscilla, is it? Yes, ma'am, what is it? Your tail, my dear. You have a tail. Why is that? Even Noel looked at Priscilla's grayish tail wrapped around her small waist like a belt. Hmm, now that you've mentioned it, what's up with that? I've never seen anybody with a tail like that before. Priscilla just remained quiet after a while of anticipation for an answer. Priscilla picked up her tail and rubbed on it. It's been a part of me since birth, 